Finally, after many games of Space Base, I pulled out a victory that I'm proud enough to show you. Join me as I take a look at my first win here on Legendary Tactics. So I've been playing a lot of Space Base lately, and I have to say the, the community on Board Game Arena is really skilled at this at this game. This was actually the first win. I don't know how many games I've played, um, but certainly close to maybe, t well, over 10 for sure. I don't know if it's 20 yet, but oh my gosh, the community is really, really skillful at this game. So um, what I've been trying to do uh, is figure out the best strategy. And I think the overall, the, the strategy that seems to be the best overall um, is to um, build up your passive income as high as you can um, in the first half of the game. Um, so any opportunities you have to take passive income, even if it means you can't buy a card this turn or what have you, you want to take it. Because really, if you think about it, a passive income will pay you for many, many, many turns. It's much more, worth way more than the three gold or whatever um, that you get this turn. Um, it'll pay going forward for the rest of the game. So that's that's something that I've been really focusing on. Um, later on, converting um, as many of the higher uh, number rolls to um, to victory points, um, and uh, in general, I mean, it's it's one of those things where you do do kind of have to roll with what you got. Um, the game for those of you who are who are not familiar with the game, it it plays a little bit like I I think it feels like fancy splendor. It's uh, like splendor in many ways. Um, but it is it is a different game. It is its own thing, and there's enough twists on it that it feels like it's uh, its own game. But uh, certainly, that's the closest um, I felt I could compare it to. Um, and it's a, it's a it's a really really fun game. And as I said, if you're on board game arena, the community will give you a very good challenge. I've had some people see my ELO ranking and just bail <laughs> because they didn't want to waste their time. I guess. Uh, but anyway, it's, uh, it's fine. Um, I also think, uh, seven and eight, obviously six, seven, eight are going to be ones you want to prioritize and make sure that you, uh, you get some good cards in there. Cause obviously those are going to be the most common rolls on two dice. Um, and, uh, the, you know, the twelves and so forth are great. They have lots of amazing rewards, but there's a reason for that because they don't get rolled that often. Now that, as I just said, is I just rolled a 12. Um, but, uh, um, in general, you want to try and, uh, I think skew the numbers, um, more towards, um, the, uh, you know, the, the lower numbers in general, um, focusing on numbers less than nine, um, and just keeping in mind that it's good. It's a good idea if you can build up a great blue rewards in, um, in the seven, six, seven, eight area, I think is, is good. But again, I, I hardly consider myself an expert. Um, my goal in this game is, is again, um, to, find that that point where the where it tips right a lot of these games have a, a time where it tips the first half of the game you're building your economy you're building up your resources and the second half you're just going uh flat out for victory points um and this one i've i've still been having a bit of trouble finding exactly when that tipping point is um so i've just been i figure that you can't go wrong buying great cards and giving yourself more bonuses, obviously, um, but it's the timing of the of the of the purchasing of colony ships, for example. Um, the colony ships are great; they're likely necessary to win, but you also need to have the, um, you know, the 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 money and and the uh, I guess you can't buy them too early. You got uh, you got to have a lack of time, is what I was going to say. Um, you know, at a certain point, you do want to trade up those rewards that you're getting from your cards in exchange for a quick burst of victory points. And, you know, as, as maybe I've, again, the colony ships I compare to like the visitors in Splendor to some degree, although the visitors are uh, much more benign. Uh, you're not losing anything by um, <clears throat> by attracting a visitor. So, um, and in this game, I as you can see, I, at the top uh, right corner, you can see my, I have five gold and four uh, passive income, two victory points. 
Um, <clears throat> and this at this stage of the game, you're not too worried about victory points. If the if you get a few, that's great. Um, but it's more the passive income because <clears throat> I've, I've played games against opponents where when you have some serious passive income and you can buy from the second or third tier every single turn, um, you really improve your your opportunities. Um, th not to say that there aren't some decent cards on the on the um, top row. The the uh, and my opponent just bought a great one, for example. So there are some decent cards for a low price, uh, but. Uh, but really, you want to get into the, the the really heavy cards down below. That's where the where the most where you're going to have the most fun and get the most um, resources uh, as well. So um, yeah, so the the game um, this game uh, was against a player who is <clears throat> not ranked terribly higher than me. Um, so I was happy to connect, and because uh, I've as I said, it's been. Not frustrating. I'm I'm happy to lose against a good player because I learn more that way. Um, but uh, it it has been a, a surprising uh, how difficult this has been to win. <laughs> it's been a, a crazy uh, a crazy long time. I I I played against Flash uh, one night and I won that one. That's why my ELO is 31 on there. But that was it. I was teaching in the game, so it doesn't really count. <laughs> um, I'll take the win, but you know. Um, <clears throat> so, um, yeah, the, the, but the strategies have been a little bit harder to discern. Um, at first I tried to just spread out my, uh, numbers so that I would get a bonus regardless. Um, however, I started seeing some, <clears throat> uh, <clears throat> of my opponents who were, who were stacking, they'd pick, you know, a few numbers and build them up three or four layers deep early on. And so when that number hit, um, it was a great, uh, great thing. Now that obviously depends on what is available <clears throat> from the uh, from the card pool there, from the shipyard, but also uh, what you can afford. Um, I think it might, in general, be a great idea to, if you can, um, build up under one low number. So if you can build up under, you know, well anything six or less, because it just means that um, you're likely if once one in six chance of getting a massive. Uh, bonus, a <laughs> massive boon um, either way, um, well, especially on your opponent's role. Um, I think that that might have some strategic uh, value as well. Um, and I think you also need to pay, you can see that's what my opponent's doing there. Um, there's also a lot of value to paying attention to the, the, red, uh, the red bonuses because when a card is inevitably replaced as, uh, as, it, as it happens, then you want to make sure that you're going to get something decent in exchange. If you've paid for a card and it's only been on the table for a short time, you want to make sure that you are getting some, some sort of worthwhile reward. Now you can see I've, I've got my, I'm trying my spread strategy here. I'm putting uh, a bonus under every single number, regardless, I'm going to get something. Um, and, uh, I, I don't know if that's a good or bad strategy, but it is interesting that I've seen a lot of games where people, um, who crush me don't actually, uh, <clears throat> play the, um, they don't actually do that spread. They, they stack a lot of rewards in, in a, a few, a few places. Um, and so there's gotta be some strategic value to that as well. Um, so I'm looking at the, uh, now I'm finally able to buy tier three cards because I've got my, my passive income up, um, we're at six now, which, which is pretty decent. Um, and that's going to certainly help with, uh, with, with buying, um, uh, you know, the, the higher tier cards on a consistent basis. The other, the other interesting strategy aspect here, uh, I'm going to reroll a couple of the dice here to see what I get. Um, another important strategic, uh, consideration is, um, I think the, the timing of when you buy a card and when you just save your money. Um, I mean, that's again, true of any deck builder and it kind of applies here, but, um, sometimes you may want to save up for a card that's on the third tier that you really feel you need. Um, I'm not sure exactly how that is best handled, whether you, you know, this is something where you should buy all the time um, or not. Um, that's something that I'm still learning. But you can see um, now that I got my spread, I'm looking to stack uh, some rewards on the lower numbers. So on a one and two, on a one, uh, if my opponent rolls it, I'm getting six 
uh, six uh, gold, which is pretty awesome. And certainly a roll of uh, three would be pretty awesome for me <laughs> if my opponent rolls it. Um, another kind of a strategic consideration that I'm not sure of, as I boost my passive income to seven now, which is awesome, um, is the, um, the the charge cube cards. I'm, I know I understand why they why they exist. I understand what they're about. Uh, as I get the three, I can manage to get uh, a whole bunch of money there. Yeah, so that's six, seven, eight. Six, seven, eight uh, um, gold from that roll from my opponent. So thank you. Um, <clears throat> but the, the other thing is that the charge cards, and I, I get it, you know, you, you take an action and you have to place a cube. So it makes them kind of more expensive in terms of time um, because you don't get, say, as much of a bonus, but you get a charge cube on that square. And I... I the, the more I play, the less I feel that they're valuable um, as the, uh, in general, as a, a charge, like where you fully charge something and then, and then unleash it. Um, the reason is because tier three cards are usually the ones which have the best effects for that charge. There are some tier two ones uh, as well, but you can see there's, there's a few um, options there. But it's the time. It it's really it just takes, um, it takes time to build up those cubes. I mean, there's one cube on the bottom row, I believe, right now, which is, I think it's if you play once you place five cubes there, you get twenty victory points, which is pretty could be game over, <laughs> um, pretty much right away. Uh, oh yeah, there's sorry, it's you you just win. Um, however, you have it's a twelve costs fourteen, and you got to get like enough twelves. Um, and it's, I'm sure it's possible to build some synergies uh, around that, but it's just, it, it's going to take a lot of time and time that you don't necessarily have. Um, it's going to be, um, you know, by the time you get to the point when you can afford those cards, I don't know. I just feel like there might be better purchases, uh, out there. However, if there is uh, something, for example, where it says uh, there's a card down there, which if you if you get it and the number hits, I think it's on an 11, you get a tier one card and a tier three card uh, right there in the center, that one right there that I just bought. And hey, that's awesome. If you get an 11, you get two free cards, potentially worth 20 gold or more. Um, that's pretty that's pretty great. Um but the the again you know you need to hit that number i mean and the game has some luck but i don't consider it to be a luck based game i think that the luck that is involved i mean i suppose it's possible you roll you know terribly and you build up a uh, you know an 11 uh, that's amazing is but you'd never hit an 11 in the game but i think also you got to be smart about how you build up uh, you know, yeah, sure. If I get a 12 right now, I'm going to be really happy, but I'm not going to bank on it. I'm going to build my strategy around, uh, the numbers, um, you know, say eight or less, nine or less, maybe, um, I think are, are really where the game's won. You will occasionally get some great bonuses from, um, the, the higher numbers, but, you know, so you don't want to neglect them, but you set them up with one, maybe two cards, I think, and then, uh, let the uh, dice fall as they may, but you want to be working on building up the lower tier uh, numbers, like uh, the the numbers here where you have a choice, for example, between uh, two and three or five. You know that's a good choice. So I got three uh, victory points there, I think, or and a and a cube, um, or um, you know four or five victory points or whatever. Those are the types of choices you want to have, and. Uh, and you can see here where paying off, where it's paying off, where you, someone rolls a one, uh, my opponent rolls a one, and that um, boosts my um, my income. I get a lot of money every time that happens, so that's uh, really great. And having nine residual income versus my opponent's two, um, that is building up some amazing, amazing momentum. Um, that uh, I think is is going to be pretty tough to beat. You know, I got twenty six to spend. Um, and so, so, and, and then, uh, actually it leads to this interesting kind of, uh, strategic point here is when, you know, when do you make a run with the colony ships? And I'm thinking that right now is a pretty good, uh, pretty good opportunity because, um, this puts me at 24 and really with nine residual income, I'm picking up 
a few bucks every time uh, my opponent rolls, every time I roll. You know, I think this is basically just a race now for the end. And my opponent's only at 10 um, victory points um, and doesn't really have the income to support. And that's why I think the, the passive income, the Saturns, are so important because they really get you to the point where you are, um, you know, you're, you're um, you know, able to buy the higher tiered cards and or colony ships um, given a bit of time. And, and really, um, I, I, I chose the, uh, the ship on the 11 mainly because I could, I really wanted to, to benefit from that. I didn't feel there's any cards that really jumped out at me. And, uh, so I just took one for, um, for some income, you know, but there was no cards there that really made that purchase worthwhile. But, um, but, uh, but yeah, but now is really the, the time where, um, with my opponent being kind of broke, um, at three and three gold, two passive. Um, I mean, there may be some lucky rolls that my opponent can get, but with, with nine guaranteed income every turn, I'm just thinking that I should just, uh, take, uh, take the money buy the colony ships at this point, not even worry about buying anything else. Um, and just run with what I, uh, with what I have. And I think it just becomes a, you know, a type of, you know, race to the end, essentially, at so at a certain point. And uh, unfortunately, that comes down to having um, gold and passive income. And the, I think the, uh, you know, the ultimate uh, reality is just, I mean, you can have a good setup where if you get a great role, you get a bunch of money and, and all that sort of thing. But if you buy a colony ship and so forth, you you're out of gas at that point. And unless you string a bunch of rolls together uh, to get the the money you need to buy the colony ships in the race to the end, I think it's going to be a tough, uh, a tough game for you. The, uh, you know, but I'm, and as a, you know, I'd much rather be in, you know, a situation where I have 21 gold and 10 passive income um, instead of where my opponent is. And you can kind of see the writing on the wall at this point, um, even though my opponent has, uh, crawled up to 23 um, victory points. There's just no consistent way that my opponent can get to 40. And I'm beginning to skip my buys because I'm just saving up for um, the colony ships that I want. And I'm happy to take the the rolls of my opponent to get uh, <clears throat> the, the money I need um, to buy the colony ship. And at this stage of the game, replacing numbers, especially the higher ones, isn't going to necessarily have that much of an impact. It might have a small impact, but it, it doesn't matter so much. Um, and uh, so, yeah, my opponent tried the stacking strategy. It's probably, honestly, the, the best way to do it. Um, I, the, one of the weird things about this game, I find, is that there are some times where you just can't seem to get the cards that you want in the right order, especially with passive income. So anyway, this is the final situation of both of our boards. And uh, thanks for uh, thanks for watching this little playthrough and celebrating my first win with me of uh, Space Space. Thanks for watching. We'll see you here next time on Legendary Tactics.